Now let's take a look at VisualStudio.net. Now, I can hear the screams and the catcalls from some people who may be watching this who are saying, I'm not about to give Microsoft another few hundred dollars to develop on their platform. And, and if that's the way you feel, that's absolutely fine. You can build these things using Notepad and the command line uh, compiler functions. But I would strongly uh, suggest to you that the VisualStudio.net is well worth every dime you spend on it. It does a lot for you, and it makes it really easy to build some complex web pages without a whole lot of hassle. Let's go out and take a look at VisualStudio.net. Notice I'm going to click on Start Programs, and I've installed VisualStudio.net, and I'm going to choose from the flyout VisualStudio.net. And there's a couple of things I really want you to see here. This is not a VisualStudio.net course, and so I'm not going to try to make it one. But now, I don't know how the video uh, is going to turn out here. But notice I can see some projects that are already there. And I want to create a new project, and there's a couple of things I really want you to see here. So I click on New Project, and then notice my choices up here, Windows Application. These are all in the same IDE now. I'm going to choose ASP.NET Web Application, and I'm going to change, and I'm going to set the name of it to something easily recognizable. I'm going to say Simple ASP Example. So remember, we create a simple ASP example. Now, what this is going to do when I click OK, not only is it going to set me up with certain defaults, it's also going to contact the Internet Information Server, create a virtual directory for me, and put the uh, default files and functionalities that I need out there. And that's a huge step. So I'm going to click OK, and you'll notice a little box pop up here, creating that uh, uh, particular location in IIS. So what it gives me now is a blank web form, a generically named web form ASPX. Uh, I could go out here and change the name on it if I would like uh, to be something else. But for now, we're just going to leave it alone. Okay. Uh, notice if I right-clicked here, I can save it and I can do some functions to it. But for now, uh, let's leave it alone. Uh, I want to point out something that is in Visual Studio that I just can't skip. I think it's so cool. You always have trouble running out of screen space out here to do your coding and stuff. In a later video, we're going to talk about how to code this and how to get around in here. But notice Microsoft has put these little push pins in Visual Studio. And if, if it's vertical, then it's locked and it's always there, but if I click on that push pin and it goes horizontal, you'll see it laying over here. Now when I move off of it, it slides over out of the way. And if I want to see my toolbox again, I simply mouse over the toolbox and it slides out and I can grab this, uh, this object and, and place it out here. It does the same thing over here for Solution Explorer and for Properties, and so I can determine uh, how these things work. Now, just to kind of uh, give you something to play with here, Notice I can change the speed on these things, and I'm going to speed it up quite a bit so that when I move over them, they, they get out a lot faster, and so I don't have to sit and wait. So there's a lot of things out here. Uh, we'll come back and talk about entering code a little bit later in Visual Studio. But you'll notice here in Visual Studio, very simple for me. I don't, I'm going to pin this so we can see it. If I want a button on my web page, I click, draw my button where I want it. Then let's say that I want a text box. Okay, and then I want a drop down list. So I put those both on here and notice they're there. Now if I execute this or run this, it will compile it and set it up and so forth. And it will show me the web page in a web browser. Notice there it is. Now if I don't like the way I've got it laid out, I can come back in here. And let's say I put my button down here and I put my text box underneath the button and I put my drop down list up here. Now if I run this again, you'll notice then I have changed the layout on my web page. Very easy to do this. Now this, they tried to do this in uh, Visual Interdev if you ever used that product. It wasn't quite that smooth, but uh, it really works excellently here. Okay, so that's what happened in Visual Studio, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of Visual Studio things here. But I want you to notice what happened. I'm going to go out to the Start button, go to Programs, Administrative Tools, and let's go look at what happened in Internet Information Server just by creating that project. So I'm going to go to Internet Services Manager. Remember from a previous video, we talked about that. And so now in Internet Information Services, you will notice under Default Website that I now have a simple ASP example. And if I uh, expand that, you will see some files that it set up for me. And here's my web form uh, ASPX file that's out there that I just created. And uh, let's see, let me open this. 
and notice it takes us back to Visual Studio and it will show it to me uh, eventually take it a second here on my machine and notice this is the page we're working with so I'm going to close that back out so this is huge it's set up a virtual directory now let me show you right quick if I want to set up my own virtual directory what's involved I right click on the website choose new virtual directory and then answer the wizard to set these up all that was done for me automatically so Visual Studio is doing a lot I would strongly strongly recommend that you use Visual Studio to build these things I don't get a commission from Microsoft I'm not trying to sell it I can just tell you much easier especially in a learning environment to use that so take a look at Visual Studio uh, use it uh, get comfortable with that and you can build some really cool websites really quickly